Hello, you beautiful nerds. Welcome to the Drug Panthers podcast, where we talk about sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and all the popular art that we love. Also, we do a drug. Mostly. Mostly Mostly. drug. (laughs) Always encouraged, but never mandatory. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Brother Bill. How you doing? I'm doing pretty, pretty good, my friend. How are you? I am. Because you're my brother. (laughs) I'm not really considering you. We're not friends. We're just brothers. So we're legally obligated to be friends. Uh, (laughs) uh, We guys, guys, we have a very special show for you guys today. We have a special guest on. He is a stunt coordinator, stunt choreographer, second unit director, and a really cool dude with... 40 years of martial arts uh, experience and 25 years in the film industry under his belt. He has become one of the more prolific figures in his field. It's an honor to present Brett Chan to the Drunk Banthas podcast. What is going on, bro? How are you doing? What's up? Thanks for having me out, guys. Doing good here? Hell yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I mean, thanks for, thanks for having us. Thanks for being <laughs> <Thanks> with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. You guys drunk right now? <laughs> uh, no, we're actually this is a special. Your time, man. <laughs> <laughs> As I say, well, we did get very drunk uh, about four hours ago. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, this is a very special episode of the pod where we aren't getting drunk because it's eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but, <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, but we are so excited to have you on. Uh, like you have an extensive a resume, uh, just a legend in the game, and we're prolific, excited to get prolific. into it all. Yeah, prolific. Uh, I feel like that's a, an apt adjective. Uh, and guys, if you, uh, you, you as you notice, we're not live today. Uh, but if you want to join in on the conversation, jump into the comments and talk about what we're talking about, please feel free. Um, but with all that out of the way, uh, Bill, did you want to uh, start us off by asking our, our uh, asking our special guest his first question? Well, I guess I want to stick. I just wanted to keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Go with the kiss method, Brett. <laughs> where? are you from my guy where does a uh, an amazing prolific stunt performer coordinator come from where do you find one of those if you were looking <laughs> you find them anywhere really on <laughs> <laughs> the individual but uh, i'm from canada i'm born in, in toronto um moved to vancouver so where most of my well my career actually started from at that point and um my ethnicity is, is I'm Chinese Filipino with a little bit of Spanish mix in there. Um, however, now that I've been traveling and working around the world, I've kind of found a niche and I've, I've picked up and moved to Europe right now where life is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where you found me. Now you find me here. <laughs> <laughs> you founded the uh, Hits International Stunt Pro. Uh, stunt organization uh what yeah. led you to uh in uh, the inception uh, of the organization like what drew you to that uh like wanting to uh start your own company it's, it's not it's not like my own company well it kind of is but it's a group so it's mm-hmm. not like i i charge you guys money for anything like that it's basically right. you know, i wanted to create something that was um i love making films i love being creative and what best way to do it is with your homies, right? The guys you love to do stuff with and enjoy life with. So it, it started off as an international promotional site. And then it just kind of became a group because it became a, everyone viewed it as a group as we went along. So, and the collection of guys that are in there from all over the world. So we have 30 members and they're all like you know, top of their field. Performers, coordinators, horse masters, stunt coordinators, uh, key riggers, you know, you, you know second directors, directors, like, you know, I'm like, I'm directing now and uh, Augie Davis is directing now, main, you know, directing when other guys have moved up to second directing, like Tim Wong and and Juji, who's actually what Todor Lazaroff, who's actually directing. He was one of the stunt coordinators and the action director on RRR, which came out now. Oh, I love that movie. So, you know, we're all kind of moving up the field and stuff like that. And, and I just, when you meet the guys, if you ever interview, meet the guys, like you interview them or anything, You'd be like, wow, this is what he's talking about. It's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. And that, like, could you talk a little bit more about uh, like the collaboration with stunt yeah. coordinators and like the second unit director and like the, uh, the like the director of a film or a TV show? Because it seems like, you know, you, there has to be a pretty uh, strong collaboration uh, with, with between the two. If it's if the, the finished product is going to come out to something you guys are proud of. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that relationship? Yeah. I mean, it just depends on the director. Sometimes mm-hmm. directors embrace it and understand that, you know, these are my guys and they're here. It's what they do. So they're here to make us, you know, make my vision come to life. Some directors will look at it and go, well, no, 
that's what I want to do. This is my vision, not your vision. And they get a little uh, bent out of shape out of it, which is fine because as a director, this is your vision, but they have to understand we're here to help them bring the right. vision to life, right? If people get uh, all, you know, all uptight about it, then you're just, this is why we're here. We're here to help you. Um, I mean, there are coordinators out there that try and just steamroll the directors and this mm -hmm. and that as well, but it's a fine line. But the, the, the director and the vision is very important because in order, well, my, my, in my, I mean, the way I see it is if in order for me to, to bring out what the director needs, I need to talk to them about their, where they want it to be, where the character It's definitely story driven. Mm -hmm. And I've said it a million times. You, you can just say, okay, Brett, go, go create a fight over here. Okay, I'll create a fight. Now go create a fight over here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Now you have like three or four fights in one sequence and, <clears throat> but it just fights. There's no right. characters, no story driven. There's no, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. It just gets kind of boring because a fight's a fight. <clears throat> it could be cool fights. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, but it's just a fight. But once you start getting into like story and your character driving, driving the story, it's driving the fight. Um, I think that helps the director, if anything. And, and and a lot of directors who see that, like Jonathan Tropper, who's the right showrunner and the, and the writer for Warrior, he basically said, okay, he saw what I did the first time. He said, okay, I like it. So why don't you... You just do it. I'll write everything on the board because Jonathan Tropper is he's an avid martial artist. And the guy, the guy can do chucks like no tomorrow. Yeah. And so, but um, he says, whatever you're doing is actually like taking what he has to say and, and making it double. And if you can make that happen on screen, and as long as I keep your story points and what you want to see for the character arc, then he goes, You do it. So he lets us do it. And so that collaboration works really well because everything you see on Warrior is exactly everything I've shot in the previous couple of shots here and there because you should end up showing up on the day and the set's a little bit different oh okay well actually if i just move the camera here if i move this action over here then it, it'll be a little bit different but it's ideally the same thing and that's what 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 you're you're able to do uh when you when you ask me and this is what you want i give you exactly what you want uh that is very interesting because like there's a lot of times uh where like we'll watch a tv show and uh the 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 directing for the fight scenes are like pretty spectacular, but like the directing for like other parts of the show, not naming any names, no names <laughs> many shows. No names. Uh, but yeah, like uh, you'll you have to see go the back and watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there'll be like fight scenes that are pretty spectacular, almost shot completely <clears throat> different. And uh, so, like the more I learn about uh, just like stunt performers and how much uh, and stunt coordinators and how much they have effect on just like the final product and how the fight scenes looked. And, how the cameras are placed so everything looks uh look looks stellar i was like oh okay this is probably a second unit director who's <laughs> in charge of um, <laughs> director generally should be should know this kind of stuff i mean um the thing is is that when you have um a director uh who sees things he doesn't understand how it's how it's shot a lot of times they're like whoa i, I don't know i'm gonna shoot this i don't know so and <clears throat> you get coordinators who'll get performers and doubles to do the previs that are like super awesomely talented. However, the director wants to see your face. He doesn't yeah. want to see a stunt double's face. So getting the actors to do what these looks like is, is almost next to impossible. Right. Unless you have an actor like Andrew Koji or Joe Taslim or, you know, right. these guys are fantastic, right? You know, <laughs> Michelle Yao, I mean, she's she's phenomenal. And, and, and a lot of times stunt coordinators, we don't have that power on set. We don't have, we, we do the previous, yeah, but well, the day when we're there, if they shoot it that way is another story. Generally, all, all the top stunt winners and previous, is, we have a shot list ready. This is exactly the previous, this is a shot list, exactly shot for shot. I can just do this, everything, it'll look exactly like the previous, but you know, some directors don't like it, some will. Well, let's talk about Warrior a little bit because we've heard in other interviews how how great of an experience that was on set, just like uh, working with the crew and uh, also just like the, the actors on set, how committed they were to, uh, to the, the stunts, uh, everything. Can you talk a little bit about just like the positive experience that was? Uh, because you know, sometimes you hear that you know, art has to be wrought from pain, and like you hear these tumultuous, yeah. tumultuous set situations, but the, the movie still ends up turning out really great. Uh, can you just talk about like how, like the, the the how positivity on set and just like everybody having that camaraderie just really shines through on on a show like Warrior. From the producers to the writers to the the directors to the performers to the crew to the lighting guys, to the grips, to the ADs, to the accounting, to the office crew helping each other. It, from it's, it's, it's basically my Hallmark show. I mean, it's, it's pretty much wrecked me for any other show because there hasn't really been a show that's been like this when in terms of like from everybody, the cast are fantastic. 
We created a room, a big stunt room, huge. And we created a lounge area for the cast to be there. So they can be there when we're training. They can be there when they just want to lounge to, you know, have, have someone eat there and watch us. But when they're there and they see everyone training, like, you know, they'll, they'll want to jump in. Mm. And even characters who have no action want to be there every day and they want to be training. You know, it's, it's a first, it's a first, first rate training. I've got like, you know, this team was like, you know, 60 something people and <clears throat> all the Chinese guys and all the, uh, you know, South African guys or all the Canadian American guys, whatever, everyone has a different skill set and different martial arts. So every day we do it, we do a two hour training and then we do another hour, hour and a half of martial arts and, and it's different. So we'll put a big, a big bowl, put everybody's skills in there. Like one guy will do Taekwondo, one guy will do, you know, JKD, one guy will do boxing, one guy will do break dancing, one, you know, one guy will do long fist, one guy will do Shaolin, whatever it is. And we'll pick two things out of the, out of the hat and we'll say, okay, well, this is going to be Taekwondo and boxing. So we'll do a, a seminar of boxing, seminar of Taekwondo, and then we put them together. And that's what everybody's learning. Everybody's doing something different. But even the, the crew, the cast, they, they're all loving that. And, um, and they all get to learn something. But on top of that, too, I take the stunt guys there because a lot of the guys from around the world haven't done certain things. So... I'll teach them how to do fire burns. I'll light them on fire. I'll teach them how to do ratchets. I'll teach them how to do high balls. I'll teach them how to do, you know, little things. And so everyone's constantly doing something. I mean, as much as we can. Once we get busy, we get busy. But during prep time, we can do that. And it's it's fantastic. Even on set, everybody, because everyone jumps in on like uh, from producers, catering, catering to ads to they all jump in on the on the morning workouts that I have every day. Yeah, we definitely heard about those workouts uh, with uh, Nick Cordell. Uh, Cord- Cord- Oh, Corey, Nick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn, why can't uh, I talk? It's early. Sorry, it's Nick. Early. Yeah, Nick Cordelion. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Nick. You know your Nick family. was there every day, but Nick was late five minutes every day. <laughs> every time he was late, I'm like, Nick, everyone had to do like, uh, like you know, 20, 25 push-ups. So was, was like, every day he was late. It's like, yeah. Uh, because it was a driver because he had to pick other people up. So he wasn't showing up. I think I think I think Nick enjoyed it a little bit, making everyone do push-ups. Because I made everyone else but him do them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he loved that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he definitely talked about like uh, raved about how much fun he had on set and just like the open door policy you guys had with the with the the stunt crew and uh and uh Jenny uh and Buha, we had her on as well. Like she uh yeah. talked about how much fun she had on the Warrior set. Yeah. Both of them basically expressed how family oriented you guys were. Like y'all became like a, the y'all all, y'all's own little family on set. And like you said earlier, to from the hairdressers, makeup, stunt, directing, everybody. lighting, everybody was on the same page. And uh, you know, I, you heard about the 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 no asshole policy. <laughs> yeah, no asshole policy. <laughs> it's like a pretty much it seems like it's at every level of the show is no asshole policy well we have like i mean you think about it, like i'm away for what six seven months eight months maybe for our first show mm-hmm. and i'm there away from my family away from everything and and everyone else is there too i mean that i mean we had what 17 countries different country nationalities on the show so uh <clears throat> we become family to each other and so everyone that ever recommends anyone that I bring on, they all know what I'm looking for. They need that compatibility. If, if they're going to be assholes, then I'm going to send them home and whoever recommended them is going to be responsible because we all have to live with each other. We all have to be with each other. We all have to hang out with each other. Sometimes 10, sometimes 12, sometimes 14, 16 hours a day. And for six to eight months, if, if you are intolerable, if I cannot bear you, <laughs> oh, it makes it hell. And our workload is so heavy. It is so you know, if I have to deal with an asshole, then like, I just don't want to deal with an asshole. That's a general consensus they have with all my team. So if any of my team is rude to anybody of the other departments, you know, they, they have to let me know because, you know, we, it, we bring everybody in. So they get to know each other on a level and it helps with the actors and it helps with everyone because everyone understands what we're all going through when we're in the trenches. Like, you know, when, on the Batman fight on, um, uh, I think episode four, you know, it was, it was late at night. They had to like do rain towers and koji andrew koji and chelsea were working for i don't know like they, they were they did a full day scene and we, then they had to come in and do the night scene with us yeah in the, in the and, and it was cold in south africa at the time and the rain towers and so like andrew just he almost got hypothermia because he just would not he would not get heated up you know he wants to stay cold he wants to stay in the moment he's, he's yeah. nothing. koji quit it man 
put on <laughs> his head, man. And to a point, at one point, his fingers were turning purple. Like, get, get out of here. Go in the tent. Stop it. <laughs> but finally, he listened. Um, he's stubborn, but he's such a perfectionist. And he mm. loved that moment in there, being cold and being in that moment. The cops are, are running him and, and Chelsea down. And, and you know, what's he going to do? So that ailment that he was feeling, he felt that in, in the moment. So that was good. It, just, it was definitely cold, though. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wild, man. Go put on a jacket, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, do something. Get him some mittens, man. Yeah, we're just concerned about you, Andrew. Just put on a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, well, you know, so speak on someone who's not an asshole. We like we mentioned earlier. We we spoke to Jenny uh, about the show uh, a little while back. Uh, you guys get a chance to chop it up. Like, you guys uh, become close on on set because uh, she seems like a great person to to have on Jenny, set. Jenny's definitely an asshole. <laughs> can't have her bro. Uh, Jenny, Jenny I met her in season one of Warrior and I helped her get this like this position they were going to do as Lai um, because we're looking for and there's no Asian girls in, in, in South Africa stunt girls there's right. none Jenny's closest to it but she is such a ray of sunshine she walks in anywhere and she's emanating positivity you just want to be around her Yeah, you know <laughs> And she's and she's sexy as hell. I mean, how could you not like look at like she's and she's super talented. She joined Hits International uh, about five years later after meeting her because she had some growing to do, but she did it. And she was my double uh, uh, on Wednesday for um, she doubled Jenna Ortega for me. So she's awesome. great. She is fantastic, and she's like one of my wife's best friends now. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, cool. and, but we, I mean, Jenny and I, we always keep in touch. Um, all the time, we like we talk all the time, but yeah. I didn't know she was in this, this interview, so I was just happened to be scrolling on online one time and I saw her, I saw this interview, guys. And then lo and behold, <laughs> like a week later, you 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 messaged to me, and I was like, Whoa, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, but if, uh, you, so if you meet any of the other guys uh, on, on hits or any of the guys in hits or that were mm-hmm. on Warrior, let's say the same thing, yeah, man. It's like that's what I was saying, it goes back to like y'all just being a tight-knit family and it really it comes through obviously on social media and you know you guys meeting up and videos coming out but it really shows through the work i think like that's one of the main reasons this show does well because the ups and downs that this show has had going from network to network to network uh you know hiatus after hiatus I don't think that a show like that would a show like this would have done or would have been able to come back together if it wasn't for the group of people that you guys have. Cause yeah. like you said, who's going to want to come back to work to with like that one asshole that, that, that I <laughs> couldn't stand anyway. It's like, well, I ain't been a part of that show for a year now. So like, who cares? Yeah, like, yeah. It really comes yeah. through on the work that, you know, someone, some cast could go, do something for two years and then come back or three years and then come back to the work and it still be authentic and still have the same feel, same vibe. So yeah, they all do a really good job. Here, I think all of them would come back. Like they're all wanting to come back. They're all right. pitching to come back. They just, you know, it's such a great show and it was unfortunate because Cinemax is last year and it was hard to even watch it. People couldn't watch it on Cinemax. It was really difficult. Right, and yeah. It went away, but HBO picked it up, uh, which was great. And then HBO was having problems, and then and they got bought by Warner Brothers, and so we're like, oh, we're not going to come back anymore. But even then, that took like another, you know, how long to bring back? And then, um, and then Discovery bought Warner Brothers, so I'm like, <laughs> crap. And so now we're okay. Well, the, it's 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 lit for the last season, but you know, after Discovery picked it up, it says, well, and Discovery. I mean, Max at this point had canceled, I don't know, like hundred plus shows. Yeah, um, yeah, and because. You know, and Netflix bought the rights to air it, but they couldn't buy the territory. So I think it only aired like thir- 20, uh, 13 countries because mm. it's still airing on Max in the other countries, the other territories. Oh, oh I didn't know. Oh, that's yeah. not confusing at all. <laughs> uh, no. However, <laughs> even though it was only like 13 or 15 countries or whatever it was on Netflix, it was still top 10 on Netflix for two months. Right. That's amazing. It was top 10. But, you know, I, I guess what they're looking for, but for Netflix to say, hey, we want this show. Uh, we want to buy the whole show from Max. We, I guess it's got to have numbers like, like, like um, 
like what's that one with the with the, the kids and stranger oh stranger stranger things, things. yeah and those numbers were were off the hook right so yeah I think that's the numbers are looking for but i mean if you look at it we were only airing in like 13 or 15 countries as opposed to stranger things was just 247 million viewers yeah we're top 10 man for two months on, on like a limited amount of shows so i mean i don't know i mean i'm hoping like uh, like right now i'm nominated uh and and my and my, my my boy johnny uh we're nominated for season three for, for Emmy. please please hold your applause hold your please hold your applause. <laughs> hold your applause. Hold your applause. <laughs> i just hope that that garnishes something that I mean, they make some maybe maybe well hey. we have theories here we have theories we got a big board of conspiracy <laughs> theories stuff going on you know we were making sure we're getting it all together <laughs> we're trying to plot and twist and make sure we get it together because we believe that if you guys do win an emmy that it's coming back. It's, it's coming ah, back into existence. How can, how can you have an uh, Emmy war, award winning show? And man, Netflix loves their Emmy awards. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. They love them. So it's coming all the way back. Everybody get your pants ready. Get your um, <laughs> get your uh, tickets oh, no. to South Africa ready. <laughs> your, mouth, your mouth to God's ears. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and guys, up, baby. anybody who's watching this, if you haven't watched Warrior, please go check that show out because it is incredible like it seems like every time i uh introduce the show to somebody they're like why have i not seen this before this is like the greatest show nobody's watching. i always tell them it's because they hate asians <laughs> I say, yeah just know, guilt them into it <laughs> you, you hate asian people that's why you don't watch this show <laughs> like, you don't white people on the show a lot of white people there's, there's black people on the show yeah, yeah man <laughs> definitely you know what yeah you I'm, hate america if you don't like if you don't want to watch it right <laughs> oh man i forgot uh, Dude, I forgot dude's name. Uh, the dude who plays uh, McCleary, McCle- uh, the guy um, who owns the bar, the bull, the bull. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Leary. 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 Oh, Leary, yeah. yeah, I forgot him. What was your experience working with him? I haven't gotten. This, we we haven't really talked to anyone who really worked with him a lot yet. What was your experience working with him? Because his fights are gnarly yeah, they're brutal. like they're very brutal joe tazel andrew their stuff is like elegant you know what i mean like you have moments where it's rougher like where they're angry and they get rougher and it gets muddier yeah. but that's just how leary's is that's how he <laughs> fights how was it designing his fighting style and like where did you take from to get to create that insanity that comes across on the screen <laughs> I wanted to design uh, Larry like a freight train. Like if you meet Dean, he's he's about six foot one, mm-hmm. broad shouldered. He's just he's like a tank, yeah. and you know his demeanor when he plays that uh, he plays Leary on 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 uh, you know, online. You're like, wow, he gets he's just scary. He has that presence. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> he was meant to be like the the unstoppable force. So in season one, at the end. When in episode 10, when him and him are fighting, no matter what Andrew did, he's hitting him everywhere. He's pegging him, he's hitting him, but it doesn't, he keeps moving. Yeah. He's moving forward. Uh, you know, so now Andrew has to go different ways, find different ways to try and do it. So um, <clears throat> that's that's the moment for, for him. But even if you watch like um, Andrew and, <clears throat> and Joe, I mean, Joe was meant to be, because he's the way he's built. So let's say you two. You have the exact same teacher. You train the exact same hours, exact same time. Um, but Bill, you're stockier. Grayson, you're thinner. So if the both of you were going to sh- do one move, this move right here, to execute the power in this move is different for both of you, even though it's the exact same move. But because you're thinner, a little lighter, and you're stockier and heavier, so you can the way the way you hit execute the move is different. Right. But it will look different. It's the exact same move, but between the two of you, it'll look different. So this tells your story <clears throat> and how you how your character starts moving and why. And Joe, because he is a judokai, he is a national level uh, judokai. I think it's third dan judo. So mm-hmm. I always made Joe hard hitting, but as soon as he grabbed you, he always tried to grab you. When he grabbed you, something's breaking. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or you're getting thrown. Right. Whereas Andrew was more like peppering. He's just so fast. It's all the angles. He angle fights from everything. But then you watch, you know, like uh, Bolo. 
You know, he's just, he's a lot of hungar, a lot of power. He's big. He's like six, one, six, two, but he's big. And so he just, he just comes in and, and just hurts you with every hit kind of thing. And, you know, Jason Tobin, he's just scrappy. He has a knife. He just wants to just, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're hitting him. He's, just, he's, just, he's cutting you the whole time because if you ever fought with anyone who has a knife, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're going to be bleeding. Even if yes. you win. <laughs> and then you had Chen with the, they wanted something a little bit different. And, and yeah. I, I thought, Chen's not a martial artist. And actually, neither was oh, Tobin. No. Tobin started doing a lot of martial arts afterwards. Um, and uh, and you know, they, they all got really good. And they loved training that when we're outside of, of shooting the seasons, they're out training on their own because they loved it so much. Right. Um, and all he the just, guys that weren't martial arts, like Nick, he just wants to come train every day and do all this martial arts. <laughs> it was great, yeah. That's awesome that you guys cultivated such a rich environment there where everybody just wanted to play along. Uh, and it's it's like to your point about just uh, the making the fights a story. Uh, all those uh, characters have very distinct personalities in the way that they fight. Like it's very obvious. Like even yes. you know, like for with, whether it's Joe or Andrew or or anyone uh, or Jason, you know, all everybody has a very distinct style, uh, which I really appreciate. It like you can definitely uh, tell. Like even someone. Olivia, like yeah. I toy, man, you know? I toy. <clears throat> And so, and Jenny, like Jenny, was, she wasn't a martial artist at all. So we started just training her in season one, uh, swords and movement. And so she, she's, an, she's a gymnast. So she yeah. knows how to do these cool little flips and stuff like that. But she never really like a bam. Uh, right. But she's, she's, she's getting really good. Yeah, I didn't know that until we interviewed her that she wasn't really, she didn't really have a background of martial arts. Like you said, gymnast, Cirque du Soleil, that's not, that you know, those are good things to have, but those aren't the same at all. So yeah. it's a test. It's a testament to not only their dedication, but also the the way that you set everybody up, man. Like your training literally translates through the rest of these people's lives. Like, oh, yeah. I don't do this, and then I'm, and then I leave this show, and then I have like the tick, the itch. <laughs> I have to go out yeah. and, 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 and destroy my body. Yeah, Talking so, people and stuff, eh? Yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, why do I feel this way? Why must I assault people? <laughs> it's like I was a guest star on Warrior, now I started a fight club. <laughs> yeah. Drunk Panthers Fight Club. There you go. <laughs> hey, I'm here for it. Uh, it just rolls right off the top. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but I, I, I love that. I love that, especially that's coming from people that are seeing from the outside, like what you just said about how I'm able to affect people's life in a positive way. <clears throat> and it's not for me, it's just for them. And, and mm -hmm. I love the fact that, that they take this and they go on with it. And that, that's fantastic. And that's what HITS is kind of about, about being able to do this with each other and teaching each other and enriching each other and, and having, you know, I was just on the show in, in, in China <clears throat> and I, I had like a hundred guys, no, 90 something guys on there. And, um, and the one thing, the show was brutal, really hard. Mm. Um, but the the one take that everybody got from the show was they miss the team because the team is oh, what made it. Man. Yeah. yeah, it's always the it, it. It seems that you guys just or your like your crew, your team, puts together this. Uh, what is it? The regiment is. It can't be just the good vibes. It's got to be like because <laughs> it's got to be the results too. Because you know I'm not going to keep doing stuff if I don't really see results. You guys are like. Getting yeah, results too. That's got yeah. The guys listen, especially the Chinese guys when they come out. I mean, they're not used to working out. You know, they hang out, they smoke, drink. They don't. They don't come in. They, you know, <laughs> they've been martial arts all their lives. Now they just want to chill and and you know, smoke some spliffs and like and have some, <laughs> have, have some cigarettes. But um, they're in it and they hate it. They hate it for the first two weeks. They hate it because yeah. they're I'm making them train. We're doing like weights. We're doing like like uh, all combined movements of uh, workouts because it's practical yeah. stuff. Uh, they hate yeah. it. But after two weeks, if we're not working out in the morning, they're getting antsy and they're working out by themselves and they love it. And, you know, they come in and they're a little chubby, a little fat. When they leave, <laughs> they're like, like beasts. Yeah. <laughs> the season, they're a little chubby fat again. Cause they had, they, they let it go. But, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it's like, funny, but they know they're coming. They're going to get in shape, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, Brett, I'm so happy to see you. I gained 40 pounds. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah, like, oh, man, if I was on set here, I would lose so much weight. <laughs> I would lose uh, so much 
It'd be crazy. You know, it's for set though because the crack table's there, and it's <laughs> just oh. so easy. You know, yeah. they got everything there, like all the jellies, all the chocolates, all the bread, all everything. So Ooh. sometimes uh, it's a little harder. Actually, I'd probably be huge because I'm I'm an eater, but I don't eat sweets. Mm. So I'd probably just be massive. <laughs> yeah. Just be walking around, can't touch my back. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> when did Dwayne The Rock Johnson jump? Uh, That's the way it's the same, man. You're always Gracie anyway. Hey, Gracie, can you scratch my back for me? Yeah, go ahead and scratch my back, man. Help <laughs> a brother out, man. Help a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> you brought up uh, The Rock. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, like I, uh, we saw that you, you know, you worked you just said on it barely, you didn't really bring it up, you said it, <laughs> and then I jumped on it. <laughs> and that's that's what we call it in the biz a segue. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, you obviously worked on Skyscraper, a, a film uh, starring The Rock, and uh, we uh, we there was this story that came out recently about apparently The Rock is a sort of a jerk on set because it tends to show up about eight hours late. On set, we're not gonna say jerk. Um, we're gonna say he's a busy man. He's a busy man. He's a busy man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it tends to show up late on on set, and uh, the, the, apparently, the, a lot of things that happen uh, with some action films is the the you know, actor is late. They'll end up having to shoot around the stunt man uh, just to make it look as as presentable as possible. Uh, and we're big fans of the the movie Fall Guy that came out this year, which is has a pretty similar story about this actor who uh, isn't of present on set and they have to shoot around the stunt man uh do you did you uh like have any experiences like that in 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 your in your uh, uh experience on skyscraper or any actors not, uh, not that just, yeah not yes yeah. not skyscraper yeah like that, you know, yeah like if you want to get into the the rock and all but if you ever had any experiences all, with uh Dwayne is a very large man I don't know. <laughs> we live in los angeles and i'm not trying to make <laughs> i'm not trying to have problems uh, but yeah, have you ever had any experiences like that where the the stunt the stunt crew and the filmmakers have to work around like an absent actor? If you if you if you talk about uh, Dwayne, say Dwayne. If you if you call him <laughs> call him the Rock, he's like the Rock. He, he's in character. But if you say, hey Dwayne, mm-hmm. he's like he's Dwayne. Okay. You, know, okay. you, know I mean? you can call him anything you like. I'm just saying it. It's just the persona. Oh. It, it's, it's the legend that he lives through. So when someone calls him the Rock, he's just like you know. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I worked with him on Hercules, and he was massive. Like we're talking like twenty six inch arms, I think, or whatever it is. He was just he was working out for the role, so he, he's huge. But you also mm-hmm. have to remember too, Dwayne is also uh, he's also known for his body, his size, his look. Right. That's what he's he's known for. He's not like. <clears throat> You know the Clint Eastwood type of actor you can get for certain roles. No, he's not. He's he's known for these roles, and um, <clears throat> so yeah, Dwayne was uh, well. I mean, the '80s and everyone can make their schedule. This is the schedules we have to shoot, mm-hmm. and Dwayne will shoot show up four hours late. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, it's not right. But at the same time, in his defense, <clears throat> so Dwayne, you know, his his way he thinks is because look, part of my every day in my job is looking the way I look. So I can't do that in the day. <clears throat> he can't do that in the day. He can't. He can't work out like, for like three hours at the end of the day. He's right, he'll be right. exhausted. So he does it at the beginning of the day. So <clears throat> if schedule dictates him to be there at eight a.m. and he has got to start working at five, let's uh, working out at five. Right. He's not going to work three hours up to ten because he's he'll work out two or three hours. He's got to you know eat and get drinks and then he's got to travel to work so that generally turns up before hours so his mythology is this is my this is my my job this is what i have to do i have to be like this for for everything i do for his roles he's playing a football player he's playing hercules playing green Jonathan. he's just whatever role he's playing he's the big dude and he's if you're looking a good good shape dude so <clears throat> that's part of it um there are some actors uh i i don't want to make any enemies either <clears throat> but <laughs> Yeah, there are some actors like that. There was just one I don't want to mention. I don't want to mention the set this was. As but long I, as they're smaller than you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce Lee was five foot six and one hundred thirty five pounds. He can't. Okay, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but there was this one actor. I, I think that they had like two hundred extras, and they were on the side of this cliff, and it was a hot day, and was, and everyone was waiting to 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 go set right, and everyone was on set, and his call time was I don't know like. Uh, like it was like uh like one or 
12 p.m. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And everyone was there setting up everything like that. The whole crew, 200 extras, standing in the sun. And they're there at like nine. <clears throat> he nine. rocks up at 4 p.m., <laughs> drives on to set. So I, you know, I don't know the, the times were exactly, but drives on to set, looks around, walks up to the director, goes, I don't want to shoot today. Gets in the car and drives off. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, yes. so there, are, there are actors that do that. Um, so yeah, you know. Uh, hey, that's, yeah. Man, that's wild. The thing is, is that the power that is given to them is by the people and producers' money. Mm, so right. as long as they're doing that, then these guys will do it. I mean, because they're the name, obviously, that's making the movie money. And the movie's making money, producers are making money, so they got to deal with the headache. And that's then true. all of us, little people, just have to <laughs> bite the bullet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, just count that's why it's so key to have your homies with you because even though while that shit's happening, you're having a good time with your homies. I basically said what he said, right? When we heard about that, I was like, oh man, the rock, you can't be the rock and just come in with like little saggy titties or nothing like that. Yeah. Like, nobody come but in. You know here what? Rain has always been an absolute gentleman to everyone on set. I mean, oh. he's particular about you, he doesn't want people taking pictures all the time because otherwise, one takes picture, then everybody wants to take picture. You understand that that mob mentality? Oh, yeah, she's doing it, and so it just rolls. So right. he'll be like, okay, you know what? His his guys will say, hey guys, we'll take you over here. We take some pictures over here later on at this time. You know, when it's away from all eyes. Otherwise, right. he gets mobbed. I mean, <clears throat> they it's like we we were in Budapest and and they were staying at the, the Four Seasons and. You can see the amount of crowds. Like actually on Skyscraper, we had this one dude <clears throat> outside a set. He sat out there for like, I don't know, two weeks with a big, big, big head of Dwayne Johnson cut out. And he sat there just standing for 12 hours a day, just standing like this with, with the big sign, the big <laughs> cutout. <clears throat> he drove by every day. Every day he was there for like two weeks, for like 12 hours, <laughs> morning to night. Just because he wanted to meet me. So eventually, you know, Dwayne came back one day and he stopped and he, and he said hi to him and he took a picture of him and, you know, I put him on an Instagram uh, uh, video for, for for everyone. But I mean, oh, it was, yeah, like, cool. we get that. Like, I remember on, on, on Twilight, <clears throat> when we're on Twilight, we, we had to, have, there had to be so many security out there, like so many, because girls were crazy. Like they would literally be high jumping in the forest and crawling in the trees and the bushes <laughs> oh on the God. ground and security would catch them. Like they're all camouflage and shit. And these are like women. These are like ladies <laughs> from the ages of like 16 to like 32. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. But I mean, you know, they do. they got groupies like the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. That's a different level of fame for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, I do want to ask, Cause I just thought about it. Well, I didn't just think about it. It's one of the questions, but I'm gonna switch it up. Since you've been in so many shits, so prolific. Okay, what is your well, not your favorite? I got it. I'm a. I'm gonna narrow it down even more. You were in White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Two. Yeah. Would you say sister films or what did you say? Yeah, like twin Kiss films. and Cousin. <laughs> Kiss and Cousin. Same, same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so which one of those is your favorite out of those two? We're just going to go with those two. Well, <clears throat> White House Down um, I was shot in Montreal, Canada. Mm. Ironic. Um, so <clears throat> <laughs> I didn't really, I, 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 on that show, I wasn't, I was a day player. I just kind of came in, run around with some guns, shoot down this and that. It was, it was a little bit different. On Olympus Has Fallen, um, it, I, was, I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, <clears throat> and uh, I, I met a lot of fantastic people there on that show. For me, that was because I met like Simon Ree, who's, who's been an idol. He was, he's played Day Han in Best of the Best. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and he's one of my best friends now, you know. Um, but oh, I met so many people like Johnny Yang. I met Johnny Yang, who's my oh. right hand now on Olympus Has Fallen. Like he used to send me his resume all the time, but uh, you know, I never had any shows I could take him on, but I actually met him physically on Olympus Has Fallen, you know? So, um, <clears throat> Lynn Oding, who is a coordinator, uh, along with Keith Willard are actually friends of mine. So, uh, it was prolific for me because of the time I spent with the guys on that show and the people that I met and how it became. 
Uh, that's why I liked him more. So, and I had to do more, you know, explosions and running around. And yeah. yeah, 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 it was cool. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it sounds like that uh, that Olympus's fall was a better experience. Like, you took away a lot more with that one. To long story short, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 no, no, no. I just want to tell you why. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that that's awesome. Uh, and you know, and going back to Warrior, and also just like uh, uh, other. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Other performers that we really enjoy. Uh, that third season, uh, we got to see Mark Dacascos, uh join the join the cast. Uh, what was that like? Because he's also another just like you know legend in the game. Uh, what was it like getting him on the cast? He, the guy, is one of the nicest nicest men you will ever meet. Like he would throw a kick. And, oh, you okay? I, I didn't want to kick you too hard. And he's like, no, no, you barely touched me. No, are you sure? He just does. He's so safe conscious. Uh, and he's such a sweetheart of a man, sweetheart, like absolute sweetheart. And he's an icon. He was one, one of the guys I looked up to uh, growing up in, in the industry, like, you know, Brotherhood of the Wolf. I mean, yeah. that was one of the ones I was like, <laughs> dude, this guy is badass. Um, and I worked with him on uh, Code Name the Cleaner, which is, uh, I think, 2005, right before I left for Nacho Libre. So, yeah, 2005. So, and then um, I worked with him again. I worked with him before that on The Crow. Well, I met him on The Crow, TV series. Yeah. And then right. afterwards, um, yeah. But he's he guy's fantastic, and, and he just he added to the to the the cast so well because he's exactly how they all are. Yeah, that's yeah. that's awesome. We were we were really excited when we saw him show up. We like I think when his first scene popped up, we both just said Jimmy Lee is in this movie. <laughs> yeah. We we double drag. It's like the worst. Martial arts movie <laughs> ever, yeah. and, uh, but it's yeah, it's made ninety percent better just but because it, he's exactly. It. It's good. It's great because he's in it. <laughs> is it? It's rumors. This is rumors. Is it true? Did you quote unquote get jumped in Cape Town? <clears throat> and if so, are those people okay? <laughs> like, it was um, it was a pre-jump, so I was leaving Dustin Newman's home uh, to go meet the team for for dinner. And at this point, it was nighttime, and I think it's street is called uh, Long Street. Anyways, it, it, in this area, not supposed to be out there at nighttime, <clears throat> and oh. especially they're going out. And I was waiting for my Uber. I just remember I was just looking my waiting for my Uber, and you know, um, a couple of guys had walked over me over this way on my left, and I was just I, you're in when you're in Cape Town, you're always kind of weary because you feel it you have to be always you know always be aware of stuff's mm -hmm. going around <clears throat> and um someone kind of started walking over and i looked up at them and you know when someone's looking at you but not they're not looking at you looking through you past you yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so I, as soon as i as soon as i saw that because there's two guys walking i looked over and i caught someone walking over this way and i just went boom boom and i and i jumped and i ran onto the street and so you know, I pushed a guy, I pushed on the guy, but the first guy, I hit him so hard that he went, I guess, landed in the middle of the, of the road. Whoa. <clears throat> and uh, I just kind of look around, and then the other guy was standing here, and the guy kind of pushed, the other guy pushed, and the other standing, he's like, uh, what do we do? <laughs> I was like, that? Because <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the guy was, you know, it didn't expect it, I guess. And then I just yeah. jumped in the Uber, and we took off. And um, I didn't want to stand there. And I'm, I, I'm not about going to sit there and try and fight three guys and right. three more. And they could have knives. and just like, <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I jumped in the, the Uber, and the Uber just like, oh, so you are. Because he goes, I wasn't even going to come here. Because he said, this is not a good area to come. Because usually uh -huh. the Uber drivers. I'm like, oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> good to know. <clears throat> because, yeah, uh, that, you know, that is hilarious. I mean, poor guy. I was just saying, like poor criminals. Poor criminals. <laughs> you shouldn't have even made that decision, sir. You should have yeah. done a Google search or something before you fucking. Uh, yeah. it. It's crazy. It like, so it wasn't really a big fight. Or it wasn't really. Mm -hmm. like, it was just me, like wham and push and hit and then run. Yeah, that, that's all it was. Uh, that's good. You know, that's exactly how it should happen. When I'm be watching movies and some dude just demolishes a guy, and then you're just his homies just keep trying to fight the guy i'm like <laughs> yeah. i'm running i'm not right. going to fight you if you just beat yeah. up my homie like that i'm like man that's crazy i'm gonna have to come back and get him later because i yeah. gotta leave right now <laughs> yeah if i'm the third yeah, guy, it's, it was funny because the guy that was walking my right after i'd done that he was literally frozen <laughs> <laughs> 
like, uh, uh, and then I was gone. <laughs> if I don't prove he can't see me, <laughs> you have to rules. Yeah, <laughs> if I just stay really still, yeah, think I'm invisible. She's like a T Rex. <laughs> Uh, so we asked this question to uh, Nick as well, and since you, you you're traveling all over the world all of the time, what's your worst and best city uh, or country? You can use a country since you, you, you're all over the world. You know, I'm not sure if that's uh, politically correct because. If- other countries start getting upset with you, start doing stuff. Oh, yeah, that does <laughs> happen. That's the problem. Look, we got to make these decisions, man. We got to make these tough decisions sometimes in life. Yeah, but the problem is I'm sitting on that end, not you. <laughs> I'm going to you those. <laughs> well, make yeah. the worst one when you don't play it going back. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I didn't – I really did not enjoy going to – so, I mean, I, I – been a, I've been a bunch of countries and like mm-hmm. uh, like forty something countries I've been to. <clears throat> um, the one I did not enjoy going to was I didn't enjoy going to India mm. uh, when I was there. Was just uh, the experience? Started, the experience, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't really good. Um, <clears throat> not saying that the people are nice because they're very nice people. Right, culture is 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 awesome. It's the thing I just did not enjoy the, the experience. Yeah. Um, that's been hard for me because you know I've been offered jobs there and stuff like that, and uh, I had to turn them down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to take another bite of that apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I uh, yeah. I'm at a point where I don't have to if I don't want to. Uh, That's right. exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. we all understand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think Nick even uh, said like he his his worst experience. I can't remember exactly where it was, but. Uh, he, then he ended up going back like two years later for a show and it was like it wasn't that bad so you know you never, you never <laughs> yeah, really yeah. Know. it could, it <laughs> yeah, could all be about the experience at the time it's, yeah it's definitely a flavor that you have to uh, that you have to uh get used to and that you right. can acclimate to it's definitely one of those things i mean i love indian food so i mean it's not it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's just right i just you know i mean i've been to a lot of third world countries uh i've been yeah. to a lot of places like that and uh, yeah i mean i just could not I hear you. I hear you. Look, we're gonna save face. Where is the best one? The best one. The, like, oh my god, I can't even live here. It's so dope. <laughs> well, I, you know, I haven't been to South America yet, and which is cool. I've been, I've been to um, um, the, the furthest south I think is I've been to Central America. I've been to to Panama City, which is fantastic. I haven't been to. I really wanted to go to Argentina and Venezuela and Colombia. So I might have a couple. I might have a couple movies that are going there, so that'll happen. But so far, <clears throat> ah, the Eastern Eastern European block. Mm. I, <clears throat> it, I mean, I came to Romania, and I actually have known nothing about Romania. Mm. Nothing. I came here to shoot Wednesday, and I was going through a divorce already at this point. Um, I was in Budapest. I loved Budapest. It was fantastic. But I came to Romania to shoot uh, Wednesday, um, and it's a hidden gem because not people know about. Romania it's Mm. it's kind of always been in in the communist thing and then kind of after it lifted nobody really knew about it and everyone always assumed it was kind of like what it was before but it's not uh the people here are fantastic the culture is really good the culture it's surrounded by all the Slavic countries right so but it's 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 language is not it's language is a mixture of like French Italian Spanish Hmm. Uh, it's a lat it's a Latin language, which is wow. cool. And people all look very different because of that that background they come from. Um, the men, you know what? And all my buddies here are like, you know what? You're gonna meet a girl here. You're gonna get married. You're gonna move here. I'm like, nah, no way, man. Guess, <laughs> and guess where I live now? <laughs> Romania. Romania. <laughs> Found That's you awesome. A, Found you a woman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, met, I met somebody, and and um, it's all she wrote. I mean, uh, like, wow, that's incredible. Uh, that's crazy. That yeah. seems like a scene out of a rom com. It's like, oh, yeah. I'll never do that. Jump cut to yeah. yes. <laughs> three years later. Yeah, man. She, man, it's 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 the food is great here. It's the cost of living is super cheap. Um, you know, it's it's just a, if you haven't been, make a trip out. Definitely. I don't have yeah. to try to man look what drunk methods on location. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> it's Romania chapter. Romania Athos on location with a Fight Club podcast. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That sounds dope. I, I love down. to do a, a podcast with people just fighting behind us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you can put a green screen there. You can make guys fighting behind you anyways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We'll just tell everybody we're in Romania. We just won't <laughs> actually be there. <laughs> uh, I do have one more. Uh, it's hard, hard hitting question here. Mm. You work with basically everyone on Warrior, basically everybody. Who is your favorite? Who is your favorite person to have worked with? At- oh just- man, you ain't gonna do me like that, are you? They're all gonna watch this, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get. <laughs> you did it with everybody. Oh, you did it with everybody. Uh, Jenny, she said that uh olivia, olivia yeah. was yeah. her favorite um well, olivia was her mentor on the show and right olivia took her under her wing mentor as in acting wise as well that's why mm-hmm. and her, all her role all her parts on the show were with olivia if they weren't with olivia she was killing everyone else <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> so the one person she interacted with was always olivia she didn't she didn't really interact with with anyone else with with andrew with jason mm-hmm. with with like nobody because she was the mute girl that was mute because of trauma, uh, being raped and blah, blah, and kid when she's a kid. And so everyone else she's killing. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Easy for her, but I work with all of them. So now you're going to do me like that. I'm like, Oh man. Yeah, that's that's why I did Nick like that too. Cause he basically in his short time on the show works with basically he like has a scene has with little basically there, everybody, everybody little spots. I well, okay. I'm going to simple it up. Yeah. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it easy. Because you do the fight coordination. What is your favorite scene that you've put together? Because I don't know if we talked about it, but it, you know, Google exists. You know, you direct a lot of the uh, the, the shots and the scenes, uh, the fight scenes. Which is your favorite? Which is which is one of these babies is the one that you're taking home with you, putting it on the TV when you're watching in Romania at three o'clock in the morning and you turn on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, all three seasons. You just turn on the turn on your Netflix and you, you pop it up and you say, Ooh, which one do you go to first? And you're just like, Yeah, I'm that's my shit right there. That's my shit. Season two, episode uh five, which was the big police raid with Joe and Dustin Newen fighting and Joe yeah. fighting on the stairs. Mm. That's one, like yeah, it was that was an epic one for me. Um, season three, the end sequence, and then the, the brothers fight because it was so emotionally charged. When I was choreographing that, I was using every bit of character profile moments for everyone, and uh, also the Dean Larry fight, the Larry fight uh, when he was bashing that guy against the against the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was that was a really rough one. Yeah, all three great. Yeah, I gave you three. <laughs> yeah, those are good ones. Those are great ones. That uh, first one that you meant with Joe Taslim, and that one was the moment when I was watching the show, and I was like, "Yo, they just do this different. Like they just different on this show. Like the story is being told. Like I'm like, yo, how did I get tricked into watching a kung fu movie? <laughs> like you know, oh, it was like you're you're watching the drama, but then also like, oh no." These scenes are telling a story. I'm not just watching fight scenes. Like I'm no, this yeah, exactly. Story. That's what we try to do. That's what we try to do. I'm glad. I'm glad that you guys. It comes off that way. And our camera work is not like you know when you get like let's say everyone says I want to shoot this Hong Kong style. You know Hong Kong style is basically he does a move, the camera finds it. He does a move, the camera finds it. Right. This is a little bit mm-hmm. different for us. Our 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 camera doesn't move that fast because the way the the rig works, it, it can't. So we basically move the camera. And the camera, ha- the action has to find the camera moment. So it's not like we're looking, looking, looking. It's actually moving and the action's within it. Uh, until we get a different shot. But I mean, uh, that's generally how we're doing it. That's why I think it looks a little bit different than other things you'll see out there. Other things are either find the action, find the action, find the action. Right. As the audience, you know it's gonna 
okay, we're going to move. You know, it's going to hit. It's going to be there. Oh, it's going to in reaction. So, and that's what we didn't want. We didn't want that because we wanted to be a little bit different. We want to tell like, hey, it's still an action scene, but we want to show it a little bit differently. So when you're watching, you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of different. That's kind of cool. And uh, I think that everyone that actually watched the show felt it. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally felt it. It comes through easily and effortlessly. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it, it took me a minute to even realize like, yo, I am absolutely enthralled right now. <laughs> like, I am no. on this show. <laughs> oh, okay, let me ask you guys a question then. Out of all three seasons, hmm. what's your favorite fight team? Oh, man. I I go back and forth a lot. I do really like the the brothers fight scene because it's, it's so emotionally charged. And, uh, like, it's just Andrew Koji just wiping the floor with so many people. I just love that, that kind of stuff. The season three opener was... Mm probably my favorite where they're fighting through the shop in the street or andrew koji is just going against uh the the uh, long z a uh, lot of uh, members i think that's probably my favorite and well, that's that's three fights. Fights. <clears throat> is there anyone particular you like out of those three the alley the butcher shop and the street i would like i think this is the butcher shop because i think i liked the creativity of everything like i'm a big jackie chan fan and uh, i just like uh, and i'm michelle yo fan like i love those movies where they are able to use their environments and just make a weapon yeah. out of anything and sometimes in a comedic way so i i, I really appreciate it and we getting... had more stuff in there but they cut the hours on us so oh really oh oh man yeah that, you guys did an amazing job with what, what you had i only got one and it's First time we get introduced to Joe Taslam when, cause he's getting, he's getting hit. Andrew's just tearing his ass Ooh, up, and he's yeah. just like, "What is that?" <laughs> that was a great. One. Yeah. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like this, you establish immediately through the fight scene that this dude is not like all these other dudes. Yeah. Right? Like this was <laughs> season one, episode one, the ending when they first meet. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you said that because that's exactly I was trying to portray with the choreo that I was doing with Joe. Andrew was hitting him, but he kept bouncing off of him, and Joe just kept moving forward. He kicks him, he goes, huh, and he moves forward still, causing him to come off balance. And then he just yeah. spin and he hits the pole. Yeah, uh, yeah, that because and Andrew's just whooped everybody's ass all the way till we get to this point like it's been like nothing and to the point where he's like getting cocky like yo what is what yeah. what is it so hard about living in america like <laughs> i just come here i just whip everybody's ass what is this problem <laughs> but then boom he he meets leon and he's like oh shit well, who is this cyborg of a human being <laughs> and why yeah. does he hit so hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a great character moment yeah you, you uh it's instantly established a lot about both of those characters uh, with no dialogue, it's just like in incredible, yeah. uh, incredible choreography. Uh, so yeah, hats off to you and your team. Like you guys knocked it out of the park. Hopefully, uh, the 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 gods are with us and we get another season of Warrior. Man. I know, man. I know. But we need it. And you know what? Shout out. We need fight fight people, fight fans. If you like fighting, just you should be watching this. Yeah, <laughs> why are you not watching this? Come on, people! We are, come on, man! We gotta do better. Burn. Like you know, when it was on Netflix, um, it didn't even air in the UK. So oh wow, so, yeah, it was it was on Sky TV, which then wasn't really airing. So the guys in the UK couldn't even watch it, and that was nice. one of the countries that would be one of the big big pullers of countries. But yeah, <clears throat> it's unfortunate. It's going to get there, man. You know the, the Emmy. I'm trying to tell you, I'm sorry if you're, you're I'm sorry that you're gonna have to win this Emmy. It's gonna be rough for you. It's just gonna be right, way man. third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Third nomination. That's right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Were you, I forgot. Did you mention that? Oh, I forgot. Oh, no, 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 we didn't. But uh, but yeah, the fingers and toes crossed. We'll put all the good vibes out there. Uh, guys, check out A Warrior on Netflix. If you uh, have any trouble finding it, it's the one that says Emmy nominated at the bottom. Yo, it's <laughs> <so> hard to <laughs> find. Uh, uh, but Brett, thank you so much for hanging out with us and chatting with us. Uh, do you, uh, you want to tell the people where they can find you on the interwebs and any projects you got coming up soon? Yeah, B-Cham World is my, my uh, Instagram handle. Um, that's easy way. I usually just plug it in there or hits international with a Z it's also on their website 
or on Instagram. And uh, that's things are just being plugged in. What the whole team is doing. What we're, we're up next. Groovy. Uh, and guys, uh, if you don't want to, if you don't remember all that because uh, you've been drinking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You can check all that out in the video description uh, and find the links uh, to Hits International there. Uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, watching and listening to the Drunk Panthers yeah. podcast. We do this every once in a while, so go ahead and hit like, subscribe so you get updates on new videos and uh, episodes. Hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> check us out on Twitter, IG, TikTok, Letterboxd, likewise, all the internet things at the Drunk Panthers. Until next time, stay safe, my little warriors, and may the force be with you. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace.